Hi everybody, I'm Stephanie from Razzle Dazzle Rabbitry and Yarns LLC. And in today's video, we have a whole bunch of roll eggs of bad Angora yarn and bad Angora fiber. We're gonna spin what I call bad Angora yarn. And by bad, I mean, we can start out with prime good quality Angora yarn. And prime Angora, Prime Angora is gonna look something like this. So Prime Angora is going to be just really nice staple length that's not gonna to have too much vegetation in it, if any at all. It's not gonna have a lot of small cuts or second cuts in it. And you can see the length of this. So this is one little section of the Angora. This is a great length to spin and it's gonna help produce even yarn. So, starting out with good Angora, starting out with good wool from an Angora rabbit makes a huge amount of difference. These are row legs that I have that I hand carded using my 190 TPI teeth per inch carters and you can just tell by looking at this, there's small bits stuck in here. There's extremely small pieces of Angora, and the extremely small pieces of Angora are mixed with large, uh, bigger pieces of Angora. And there's, uh, there's some webbing in here. Webbing is when you have Angora that's a little bit stuck together, but not completely matted. So, when I take something like this, this Angora, and I try to spin it up to get my tension right, often the resulting yarn is not going to be a super smooth, super consistent yarn because what I'm starting out with isn't consistent. So if I'm starting out with yarn that has small lumps in it, from perhaps multiple cuts with a pair of scissors or a pair of clippers. If I'm starting out with wool, not yarn, if I'm starting out with wool that has the small bits in it, if I'm starting out with wool that has even the webbing, like this is a slight little, slightly little web spot, creates a little bump, the result that I'm going to end up with isn't going to be consistent at all. So if you want more consistent yarn, if you're trying to spin a traditional yarn, then starting out with good Angora wool is very important. Now, is it impossible to spin Angora yarn, smooth, traditional, consistent Angora yarn from bad Angora? It's not impossible, but it's very, very difficult. And often I find that I can't go fast and I can't spin fast when I have started out with poor Angora wool. Which is why, when you go back and you watch my shearing videos, one of the things you'll see is I am very, very restrictive about which parts of the rabbit, when I'm clipping the wool off the rabbit, I'm very restrictive about which parts I actually set aside in my spinning pile. I, when I'm looking through the Angora and I'm hand clipping it and I'm separating it, sorting it right away off the rabbit, I have, I only have two piles and I, one pile is, this is the good prime, not webbed, no second cuts, good staple length, clean yarn, clean wool for yarn. And the other pile is everything else. So I have a pile that might include the shorter pieces and it might include, it will include the shorter pieces and it will include pieces that are webbed together. It will include pieces that are matted. It will include pieces that have the shorter second cuts. So here's another example. When I'm spinning, that is just under, that's about three quarters of an inch length of Angora. And that's something that would go in the pile of the bad Angora. It's all, it's all pretty relative as well. 
If you're looking to spin purposeful yarn that has texture, and if you're looking to spin yarn that you want the actual bumps, then choosing what you put in your Angora and blending it together certainly matters. So if, you, if the only thing you have is Angora like this, if the only fiber you have off of Angora is it has webbing, it is multiple different lengths, it has second cuts it in it, if that's the only thing you have and that's what you're trying to spin, there's some things that you can do to help spin more consistent yarn. So choosing your tools is important. So you want to choose a tool that is set up to spin the yarn that you're intending to spin. So if you want that traditional, consistent, smooth yarn, something like an Ashford Elizabeth II is a wheel that is designed to spin fine, consistent, traditional yarn. Now, the more, the more passes through a drum carter, the more passes through hand carters, the more likely you're gonna end up with something in your fiber called neps. And neps are when the individual pieces of the angora fiber start getting stuck on the teeth. So they could start getting stuck on the teeth of your hand carter, they could start getting stuck on the teeth of your drum carter. And they may not stay stuck, but what they do is they start looping around and they create, they create an inconsistency. It's no longer all the fiber going in the same direction. Some fiber has looped around a hook and that creates an inconsistency in the puni or the roll egg that you're creating or the bat if you're using a drum carter. And when you have that inconsistency again, you have a greater chance of inconsistencies in your yarn and starting out with a better fiber a better angora fiber is one way to help, but again, if you don't have that, then what you're really looking for is you're choosing something that blends together your fibers just enough that it doesn't have the neck starting. So this may mean you're gonna to have to choose something like a 190 teeth per inch hand set of hand carters that you only set the angora through maybe two times. Because the more you start sending it and carting your angora through, the higher your chances of getting naps, which then reduces the smoothness of the angora yarn that you have. So hopefully that makes sense. So when you're carting, you're really trying to put all the fibers in the same direction, and you're really trying to blend together the fibers. So you may select from your pile of bad angora, you may select some angora that is a shorter staple length, and then you may purposefully go through your, your pile of angora and select some that is, has a longer staple length. You put those all in your hand carter, you blend them together as best as you can with the lowest number of passes through the carters. You take it off into a roll egg, and we have videos on all of those, so definitely check those out on our channel and you go from there to start spinning. So I prepare for the bad Angora. Normally I don't even spin it, but this was, this was Angora that I wanted to practice, just do a little bit of practice with and practice spinning something different than the Angora that I'm used to. And so I carted all this Angora up and I put it in one of our wooden baskets that keeps it organized. I can visually see all the different roll eggs that I have created. And once I'm done with this little section, I'll hold up the wooden basket. That way you can see our method for spinning. And when you can visually see all the roll eggs you have, you can start selecting roll eggs that match up together quite well when you're spinning the yarn. So some of the roll eggs might be different colors. Some of the roll eggs might have, they might be really, uh, they might have a lot of small sections of yarn in them. Small sections of Angora, I keep calling it yarn. Um, they might have a lot of small pieces in there and you can really do a better job selecting the roll egg you wanna spin. So this is what we have. This is one of our wooden baskets. This is what we specifically use for spinning because we can visually see all of the yarn. We can see the roll eggs that we created. 
you start to see there's different colors in some of the roll eggs. For example, this one's darker, this one's lighter. You can start to see in some of the roll eggs that we started to have some neps forming in some of these. And in some of these, again, there's not that many, um, there's not that many neps starting to form. You can see in some of these, like this one, it does have a little bit of web, webbed angora in there. And when we're spinning it, we can really start to select. We're not, we have, when you're starting with not so great angora, you're not gonna select all the bad roll eggs and spin all the bad roll eggs at once. What you do is you'd pick and choose. So you might take a more difficult roll egg, you're gonna spin it up followed by an easier roll egg. And what that does is it spreads out and it adds some a bit more consistency and blends it out over your yarn because if you have one entire section of your yarn one entire section of your singles half of it is all terrible and then you use a little bit easier yarn it's very obvious in your single a little bit easier yarn a little bit easier angora wool it's obvious in your single when you look at it that one entire half of your skein of the angora single is going to be a bit more lumpy it's going to be a bit more inconsistent. And then the other half of that single on that skein of yarn is going to be a bit more smooth. And so when you're making yarn, you don't want, when you're going for that smooth, traditional, consistent yarn look for Angora yarn, you're not trying to have half, one half of your single be very inconsistent and very uh, bumpy, lumpy, while one is much more smooth. So, and that's, that, that's just, uh, it doesn't matter how you put your single, if you leave it as a single, it doesn't matter if you ball wind it and make it into a double, apply it into a double, it doesn't matter if you take it and you have three spindle, uh, three bobbins that you put together with, and you apply it together as a three ply, it doesn't matter. What you want is you really want that single, when you focus on that single, to be as consistent across the single as you can. It's one of the things you can do when you're working with bad Angora that helps you just kind of stretch it out and make it just a little bit more consistent or the image or the appearance of a more consistent yarn. So if you don't have one of these, um, sometimes I found that wicker baskets or traditional baskets, the yarn or the wool gets caught in the actual basket itself. So for these wooden baskets, I really prefer the smooth surface. And if you have anything else that could be smooth, whether it's uh, a metal, metal type bucket, or if you have just a smooth surface, like a counter that you can stick all your roll eggs on, that'll help you visually. So you can select the roll eggs to help you choose a more consistent yarn. So, in many of the past videos, I've talked about the difficulty, the myth of the difficulty of Angora yarn to spin. Angora yarn is not difficult to spin if you start with good quality fiber. And that's, uh, that's just true with any fiber. If you start out with a fiber that has a lot of matting, that has a lot of webbing, fiber that perhaps is stuck together, fiber that isn't washed thoroughly, or fiber that isn't blended thoroughly, fiber that has sucky cuts, whatever. What the quality of the fiber that you start out with, whether it's Angora, or whether it's sheep's wool or alpaca, the quality of that fiber truly does matter. And so if you're looking to start spinning Angora, and you really want to see the difference between what is good what does good prime angora fiber look like and what is what I would consider bad angora? You can find, just find, <laughs> find a trusted, reputable person who sells angora by the ounce and select prime angora from them. All you need is an ounce and that'll make you an entire skein. That'll give you a good idea about what it's like to spin and ply and prepare the entire skein of good angora compared to bad angora. Now there's a lot of times that you can go and you can literally find people just giving away angora on Craigslist for example or there's different Facebook 
Facebook or MeWe groups where people have Angora fiber that it doesn't meet their standards or it's not something that they want to spin and they're just looking to get rid of it so that somebody else has a use for it. And that's a good place when you're, when you're taking a look at what is bad Angora. Um, that's a good place where you can get your hands inexpensive on some bad Angora to kind of compare the two because it's just as important to know what is bad fiber, what is not prime fiber. It is just as important to know what isn't good in your Angora fiber as it is to know what is good in Angora fiber because recognizing what is bad also helps show you better. It helps show you what to expect for good. So when you can take a look, for example, at fiber like this, and you can say, okay, right away I look at that fiber and I can tell there's second cuts in there. Right away I can tell, you know, I pick up that fiber and I can tell there's some webbing in there. Right away I know that I put my hands on it or I take a look at it with my eyes if you don't have the opportunity to put your hands on it and if you look at pictures, you can tell right away that this is not ideal. And it helps, again, it just helps with your spinning and knowing how to recognize these things helps you not get a bad deal. and helps you make more consistent, smooth, traditional yarn if that's what you're going for. So we have another small section of Angora that just came through, creating a bit of a lump. And one of the things you'll notice with bad Angora fiber is once you take this off, and once you go to apply this, after you are applying it, you'll start noticing there's going to be a lot more shedding when you have poor quality Angora fiber. Poor quality Angora fiber is simply going to release those small bits of the Angora fiber that aren't twisted up well because they're not long enough to be twisted up well. They're gonna, it's going to release it. It's going to release it into the air. It's going to release it on your spinning wheel. You're going to notice just bits and pieces, quite a bit of bits and pieces of that, of that Angora fiber. Now the other time you're truly going to start noticing the bits of Angora fiber coming off is when you go to wash and set the twist of your Angora yarn. When you wash your Angora yarn and it's just if you started out with bad Angora, if you didn't start out with prime Angora, you're going to have a significant amount of fiber all over your hands. You're going to have it all over wherever you wash. So if you wash it in the sink, you're going to notice there's a lot more fiber coming off. And it's not even as enjoyable to wash when you're using a poor, a more poor quality Angora because it really just gets everywhere. So this is another small section. If I spun that into my yarn, when I go to ply and when I go to wash it, that has a tendency to come out of my yarn. So after you've washed your yarn and your yarn is dry, you've spun it all up, you've plied it, you've hung it up to dry, using bad Angora yarn, one of the things you're also gonna notice is when you go to crochet or weave or knit or whatever it is that you're going to do with that Angora yarn, the poor quality Angora is going to have a lot more shedding. Whatever you have made, when you're using it, it's just going to shed significantly more. And whatever it is that your finished product is, is simply going to have a lot more fluff flying around. So if it's a hat, that hat is going to shed a lot more. And the interesting thing about that is it's not just going to shed temporarily a lot more. If it's something like this, you need to expect shedding that lasts throughout the lifetime of that item because there's too much variation. There's too many short pieces in this that have been spun up together and that will, through wear, through movement, they will simply become loose and they will fly off from the item or the garment or whatever it is that you've made. So although it, <laughs> although it is possible to use bad Angora and to spin with bad Angora and to make a pretty consistent yarn using poor quality Angora to start out with, the results really start to uh, becoming irritating.
after you go to use it. So you can tell the difference between some sections of these row legs right away. That was a smooth section of consistent longer staple length Angora that I had that's coming through on this compared to the last, the last row leg. The last row leg I chose, I could tell it had a shorter staple length in it and you'd see a lot more lumps and bumps coming out in the eye. Some of this is a little bit webbed. And using my left hand to pinch the twist before it, dra it comes into the draft of my right hand can help keep this consistent and smooth. As you can see, this is just one little way I can keep this more consistent and smooth. I, I'm using my left hand to pinch. So does this mean all yarn spun up from not prime angora is bad yarn? No. No. Because it of course depends on how it's prepped, it's pen, it depends on how well it's spun, it depends on how well it's set. If you have to, you can felt when you're washing your yarn and setting the twist, you can do quite a bit of agitation to felt some of the fibers down on the Angora so it doesn't have as much shedding. But when you're listening to everything I'm saying, the whole big, the whole big point is that even though this is possible to spin bad Angora, it is a lot more work. There's a lot more to think about. There's a lot more effort that goes into forcing this into being a smooth, traditional, consistent yarn than if a person were to just start with that prime angora in the first place. And really, there's not much, um, there's not much comparison between the joy of spinning prime, wonderful, wonderfully prepared angora and uh, more of your second cuts, your thirds, just poor quality angora fiber. There's not much of a comparison there because one can be quite stressful and the other is just, just enjoyable in general. So thanks for watching this video and this explanation on how you can spin up some of that bad Angora you might have laying around. Make sure to hit the like button and hit the subscribe with the bell because we're doing videos every single Saturday and every single Monday. And we'll see you in our next video.